Welcome back to One Verse. We have Todd Hostetler and Jeff Millslegel from City on a Hill Teaching Center and here to discuss a verse from the Bible off the cuff. So gentlemen, I've picked a verse in the Old Testament and Jeff, I'm gonna give it to you first. It's Psalm 78, verse 41. 78, verse 41. And that says, yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. That's Psalm 78, 41. Okay, give me just a second here. I've got to find it here, 78, 41. Ah, 78, 40. Yes, and get it again. They tempted God. They limited the Holy One of Israel. Okay, here's, here's what this is reminding me of. All right, I'm going to turn back to a few more Psalms. I want to read you part of Psalm 2. Because I, I, I just find this somewhat of a parallel, just quickly looking at this. Because remember, Psalm 78, 41, uh, what we have is, yes, and again, they tempted God. They limited the Holy One of Israel. Of course, you really can't limit the Holy One of Israel. So this, this is really a futile thing. And here's what, uh, here's what the psalmist says in Psalm chapter 2. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? Uh, I'm going to use the phrase there, stupid thing, because that's kind of what he's really getting to here. The kings of the earth set themselves and our rulers take counsel together. Notice who they take counsel together against, the Lord and his anointed. And then later on, it actually says the Lord laughs at that. He just thinks, <laughs> you people are so goofy. So um, this, this is kind of, I think, Psalm 78 here, verse 41, is not unlike what we just what I just pointed out to you from Psalm chapter two. See, what, what we, oh man, we human beings, we think we're so smart. We think we're so intelligent and, uh, you know, we've got everything figured out and, uh, and, and here God's saying, you know, I don't, I don't get you folks. You're again and again, you're, you're trying to, you're trying to tempt me or, or others, you're trying to uh, limit my ability and God's just huge. There's no way to limit his ability. Hey, it's like this. Uh, you know, I, I, I love reading about uh, stars and NASA's always fascinated me and deep space, etc. I mean, it seems like about every other three, four months, you got some other new star that's been seen so far distant and it's in some particular uh, state of decay or whatever. And then people just going on and on and on about how big the universe is. And basically it's just showing you, you know, uh, how big how big all this stuff is. And there's no way God can make all this because how big it is. And yet Isaiah actually in Isaiah chapter 40, it talks about how God made the heavens with a span, which is a distance between the end of your uh, little finger and your thumb. And God's basically saying, that's how big I'm going to make the universe. Boom, like that big. So anytime you hear about things, how big, how big, how great humans have created things and how wonderful it is to see how deep the stars are and all that stuff. God's like, he's always bigger than that. Always bigger than that. So it doesn't really matter. They limited the Holy One. No, they really didn't. They're trying to, but it doesn't happen. And according to Psalm chapter two, God's sitting up in heaven and just laughing at them. But how silly they're actually, actually thinking in their mind. So anyhow, Pastor Todd, what do you got there for us from Psalm chapter 78? Now, this is really a fascinating verse. Um, in fact, if, uh, if you go back to Numbers chapter 14, verse number 22, he kind of speaks about this. He says, because of these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test of uh, these 10 times and have not heeded my voice. God's saying, listen, I have shown you again and again and again my faithfulness. I've told you what to do. I only ask obedience and you're not doing it. Now let's go back to Psalm 78, verse number 41. Yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. So how, you know, as Jeff was talking about, how can you limit God? Well, here's how you do limit God. You limit what he can do for you. You're not limiting him. He can do all things, but you actually limit what he can do for you because of your unfaithfulness, because of your disobedience. When I turn my back against God, when I know he's telling me to do something and I decide not to, or when I just decide to live in the world and disregard God, I'll just see him on the occasional Sunday that I go to church, but the rest of my life is not. When I live in disobedience, I'm limiting God in this way. I'm limiting the promises that he can do for me. Look at the very next verse that it says in Psalm 78. So I'll read 41, but then look at the next phrase in the next verse. Uh, yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power 
the day when he redeemed them from the enemy. <laughs> you limit God by forgetting. This is what people did. They forgot his power. They forgot the things that he did. They forgot the promises, and they didn't value them. And so they limited what God could do. You know, sometimes if you feel frustrated in your life and you think, God, where are you? God, I need to see more. Why am I not seeing this take place? Sometimes we need to stop and ask ourselves, am I doing something to limit what God has planned and wants to do for me? God is limitless, but I limit him by my disobedience, by my lack of trusting him, uh, and by not trusting and believing his power. Don't limit him today in your life. Let all his plans come forth for you. Jeff, take it home, wrap it up for us. Simple question. Why do we put pictures in our house? Yeah, decorate, but sometimes, many times, at least it is for us, anyhow, pictures remind me, remind me of people, places, wonderful situations. You were at the beach, you got a picture of that or something or else you got a picture of. I got pictures of my granddaughters and their horses because uh, it reminds me of something fun. Okay, so when he says here, they did not remember his power, it's in verse 42, that right after the one we had read, verse, you not remember their power. Look, we have to make a point of, I believe, setting things up around us that help us remember when God has intervened for us in the past. I take this as a bit of a challenge here, but make a point of remembering what God has done in your life. Well, that's all we have for today's one verse. Thanks so much for watching. Well, we appreciate you allowing us to be able to minister to you this way through God's word. And we'll see you next time on One Verse.